Greetings. I'm G. Craig Lewis of EX Ministries. <laughs> and uh, it's good to be here again for another episode of The Exposition. This is episode six, I believe. Man, we've been cranking these out, huh? <laughs> I'm pretty fast. Um, this is episode six. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I just want to say thank you for all of your support. We've had people that uh, have really blessed us with encouragement as well as uh, bless the ministry just in all kinds of ways. So we thank you so much for tuning in to this show. A lot goes into recording these episodes. So we just thank you. Um, we're enjoying ourselves doing it. And um, it's good to hear your, your feedback on them. Uh, so this is episode six. This week, we're going to be talking about something that you've probably heard uh, in the media, uh, heard it referred to in the media as the year of the woman. Um, those that are high up, the elite, the uh, different um, entertainers and different ones, they consider 2018 to be the year of the woman with the Me Too campaigns and the feminist uh, movements, the male uh, being equated with men and being equal to the man, uh, and in a lot of cases, dominating the man. <laughs> uh, but this is what is popular in our Western society and it's popular for a reason. So we're going to be talking about uh, why they deem this year the year of the men and uh, the year of the woman, I mean, and uh, why so many, uh, you know, why are so many uh, famous men or high ranking men being taken down and uh, replaced uh, with a woman? All this stuff has meaning and we're going to be dealing with that today. So the year of the woman. Finally here for you, Carmen. You better get out there and get, your, get on the grind. And, no, no, no. <laughs> Let's go to the Bible, y'all. So what does the Bible tell us is the biblical role of a woman? Like, why are we created? You ready for this? Mm -hmm. The woman was created for the man. Mm. No, no, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, uh, the woman was created for a man. And let's, let's go straight to the Bible. Genesis okay. 2 and 18 says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. Um, you know, unfortunately, in today's world, that doesn't sound like enough. It doesn't sound significant enough for the modern day woman. But uh, in searching for purpose, we go to our creator. And the same way that man is given a purpose in his, in his life or in this world, uh, women were. And the woman was created as a help. And, you know, the Bible, I, I look at it. Well, first, let me say, you know, if you're just tuning in or shocked or somebody's already hit delete. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me let you know that, I mean, we're not going to speak anything here outside of what the Bible is telling us, right. because this is our authority. This is where we rest as far as the final authority. So it's, it's ours to line up with what the word of God is saying. Um, and so in the Bible, the, uh, God created the woman uh, as the help me. That is the woman. What I like to I like to use the term creation role It's something that uh, was made popular by a video I did. Uh, some years back called Era of Man, the first Era of Man. Mm -hmm. And uh, creation role uh, became a part of, you know, ABC. Uh, I didn't know I'd be starting a church at that time, but when I ended up starting a church, creation role was the very foundation. And basically, the creation role is what God created us for. And I like to look at us as, you know, a creation and we had a manufacturer and right. our manufacturer is God. And so a manufacturer gives the function to the product, right? right. That makes the product functional. Right. Without, what, without the original intent of the, of the um, manufacturer, mm -hmm. then we don't know whether it is functioning like it was created to function. Exactly. So we go to the word, we use the word as our operations manual, mm -hmm. and the word is telling us exactly how we are to function. So it's saying, that a woman's purpose is as a is to be a help meet to the man, mm -hmm. and then later on, or in that process, a part of that process, be a childbearer right. and to um, uh, be fruitful and multiply according uh, to the word. And the one of the most important things about this is that this is where your true happiness comes from. Right. Your true contentment can only come from you functioning like you were created to function. Right. Like, how would you be created to function one way and then you're using yourself for something else <sighs> and expect to get the fulfillment from uh, doing it a different way? You're only going to be fulfilled by 
following the, I, you know, I, I put together a whole lot of stuff. You know, I like, I, I get boxes of shelves or whatever and I put it together and a lot of times I don't want to read the manual. Right. I just think I'm smart <laughs> enough to put it together. Most but then when I finish, yeah. it looks good, but there's like five screws left. Right. And I don't really know why those <laughs> screws are left until like three months later. Exactly. When the whole thing, sh well, that's because I should have followed the operations manual and I would have sufficiently used all of the parts, mm -hmm. and I would have had a shelf that would last. Absolutely. Uh, but because I didn't read the manual, then the shelf looked good for a while, mm -hmm. but then it began to wobble. You see what I'm saying? And that's how our lives are. You know, we got to go by the manufacturer here. Mm -hmm. I know I went a long way left, but there are a lot of people point, that though. don't yeah. watch this. So, I mean, don't haven't heard the creation row message. So I'm right. trying to give the whole creation row message real quick. Uh, brief everyone, but that's what it basically is. We have to function the way our operation manual, the Bible, and our instructions are for us to function so we can have true true happiness. Amen. Well, when you were talking though, you mentioned something about operating in our true role, we should be content. Yeah. We should be happy mm -hmm. with that. Absolutely. So when did that change then? If that's what the Bible is telling us, then why did women start desiring to be something different? Why did they want to defy the creation role? Uh, so so the television was created <laughs> and all manners and sorts of other um, influential gadgets and or uh, things were created okay. that, that captured the attention of, you know, we are all humans, right? And this is why we need Jesus Christ. Um, so what happens is we see something uh, no different than Eve, as Pastor touched on. We see something, it, it looks bright and shiny um, on the outside, but the substance of it is very poisonous, right? And, and this is the, the key to all of this is order and the key to this is authority. Okay. If we were in obedience, then we would know that the bright and shiny part of it is not what we should be attracted to, but rather made, made aware of what's on the inside of it will keep us away. Mm -hmm. And that's what society is. Society presents or gives a presentation that looks great from the exterior, right? Um, the intent is what's on the inside and what's on the inside as it relates to the world or society is lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life, drawn us away from God, away from God's order or, or, or um, his way as far as the way he wants the home set up. So society desires to reverse the order of the home to confuse children and create a nation filled uh, with people with identity crisis. So if I presented you with something that looked good um, from, the ex from the exterior or from the outside of it, you don't know that I'm driving you away for confusion. Right. So surprise, <laughs> now you're 30, 50, 60 miles away from authority or away from order, and you don't know where to go now because you don't know who you are or whose you are, um, as we have made popular in the church, whose you are, right? <laughs> um, but this makes them vulnerable to accepting societal norm rather than God's given purpose. So that's the whole point. The point is society paints a picture that a woman can be equal to a man in, 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 in mind and in strength and ability, et cetera. And what happens is, the woman can be drawn away, and, and the Bible clearly depicts, the pastor is going to expound on that. The woman is drawn away if she's not properly covered, then she's open to whatever versus mm -hmm. the man who isn't properly raised, or maybe he's raised by the woman who isn't properly covered and doesn't know how to properly cover the woman he has. So it's just a, a ever ending or ever never ending cycle of, you know, bad order. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what say you, Pastor? Well, without the God given purpose, uh, a person has to formulate their own purpose or they're open to formulate their purpose. Right. So it's like the devil just goes around pulling the lid off of stuff so that we can fill it with the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. God has capped it off and said, this is your function, function mm -hmm. this way. But when we allow, you know, the enemy to come in and uh, snatch the true identity, our true identity away, then we're going to search for an identity. Then that's when the movies come in. That's when music comes in. And, mm -hmm. you know, we begin to get these influences. You know, uh, women see uh, Housewives of Atlanta. They want to be one of those because right. they're on TV. But you don't realize, you know, at the end of the day, these folks are using drugs. They're using alcohol. They're using all kinds of things to pacify themselves or quiet their conscience because their conscience is const constantly pointing to the creation role that they were created for. Exactly. Like when we were manufactured by God, that doesn't go away. Right. We're going to have a desire. God mm -hmm. made us a certain way. He gave us parts on our body for certain functions. Right. So when yeah. they aren't used at, uh, used 
uh, according to his purpose or according to what he purposed them for, then we're going to have to do something, use something or, or somehow quiet our conscience because our conscience is going to keep calling for the role that we were right. created in. Mm -hmm. That's why a man may look like he don't want to take care of his family and he don't want to pay the bills and, 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 and provide for his family. Mm -hmm. But he's going to eventually feel whack and feel like trash. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do? He going to blunt his lips up black right. or he's going to start, you know, hanging out. He going to do something. He's going to mess, mess up because he's trying to suppress that, that voice in him that is commanding that he be in charge. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because it's in our DNA. It's in our construction. It's built in us. There's no mm -hmm. way we can quiet it. And the same with women, you know, women act like a lot of them that I've even dealt with, you know, with the spirit of Jezebel or whatever. They 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 appear to want to be in charge. But at the end of the day, or at least once a month, they somewhere want to th <laughs> throw the tally like somebody, please help me, because right. they know they weren't built for that role. Mm -hmm. They were built to be taken care of mm -hmm. or, you know, and assist not be in charge. And so all of these things are synonymous with society changing the image of our purpose so that it can give us another purpose right. and that is turning the homes upside down which is in turn turning the children upside down which is why we have the issues we have today with you know with our young people mm -hmm. that's what it is they mm -hmm. they were neglected they felt that they were pushed aside for the uh, desires of their parents mm -hmm. uh, a kick to the curb and so now they're out trying to demand attention some kind of way. Right, right. But in talking about the year of the woman, so we're watching the women getting uplifted. So with that, with this question, why are they demonizing the men? To uplift the women, it seems like they have to destroy the men. Why is that the case? Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, the devil knows if the, if the, if the, I guess if the man is placed above the, I mean, if the woman is placed above the man, okay. the Bible tells us in first Corinthians 11 and 10, for this cause ought woman to have power, women to have power on their head because of the angels. I think I touched on this a couple of episodes ago, yeah. but when it says because of the angels, it's talking about spiritual uh, principalities and different ones. Women are more sensitive to them. And uh, I think I was telling the church, you know, that women, you know, uh, that's why you don't see a male witch or you don't see a male crystal ball reader or you don't right. see a male tarot card reader mm -hmm. because they don't have that sensitive disposition. A woman was built as a nurturer. OK, mm -hmm. if she's going to be the help meet, then she has to be able to feel right. what he needs mm -hmm. and she needs to be able to feel what the children need. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a part of her makeup. Well, that works very well when it is balanced with the logic of a man. Right. But when it's stand, when, you know, when, when it stands alone, it can become dangerous because the woman can't use, you know, in a lot of cases can't draw definitive lines based because she's emotional. Right, right. And so you don't want to put her over the man because the man is supposed to be able, you know, I got to use all these supposed to be because mm -hmm. A lot of men don't like this anymore. <laughs> yeah. but men are supposed to be able to be logical and draw definitive lines mm -hmm. of protection for his family, right? A woman can't necessarily draw definitive lines because she's emotional, so she may be feeling a certain way or feeling a certain thing. And that's why that Drake song and stuff like that makes me so upset because it's all about being in Baby. your feelings. And right. a man is never supposed to make emotional decisions based on how he's feeling. Right. God made him as the logical being. Right. And the woman is the feeler for that very reason of being able to um, uh, nurture mm -hmm. and nurture a child. I've seen my kids cry and, I'm, you know, you hand them to me, I'm turning them upside down and yeah, I don't know. Right, right. And soon as my wife, oh, oh, well, he's wet, you know, oh, uh, he's hungry or oh, mm -hmm. what? She can just feel it sometimes. Right. And that's because of her uh, emotional nurturing disposition. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. So when you flip this and the devil knows it, when you flip this, you put the woman in charge. Now she's sensitive to angelic powers and beings as well because of her feeling nature. Mm -hmm. So the devil can influence a woman more so than he can a man. Oh, somebody's getting mad at me right now, Carmina, because I'm <laughs> preaching the truth of the gospel. Right. right. But <laughs> 
a, a woman's wife. Why do you think the devil went to Eve and not Adam? Right. The devil went to Eve because he knew he could deceive her based on her feeling, nurturing disposition. Right. Adam would have looked more logically at it, mm -hmm. but she wasn't going to look at uh, logic. Uh, logically at it because that's not her disposition and her lines weren't definitive right. she backed off of it for the sake of feeling and that's what makes her a powerful nour nourisher mm -hmm. you make your powerful nourisher in the right situation right. but you don't want to reverse god's order because that man is actually the protection to protect that amen but see, hearing you say that, Pastor, I mean, it doesn't sound foreign to me because I grew up in church. Mm -hmm. And so that's what was taught to us. We understood the role of the women. We understood the role of the men. But it doesn't seem like that's being taught anymore. So why is that? Where did it go? Let's, let's go back to the Bible really quick. So 1 Timothy 5 and 8 says, But if any man provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Right? And so we see that word infidel, I think, is something that we should zero in on. We have a lot of infidels, right? We have a lot of men that are not taking care of them, so they're worse than the unbeliever, right? So this is what the Bible is saying. This is not my words. I believe it because it is the word. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. but, but we have a lot of infidels. We have men who are not taking care of their own, which leads to this year of the woman or the concept or idea of the year of the woman. Because going back to the, 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 the cycle, so if you have a, a young man that's being raised by a single parent or being, being a single mother um, who has hurt or bitterness from a previous situation because she had a child with a man who was also raised by a single parent or a single woman. So it's a never ending cycle. So you have men being, being produced uh, or befriending other men and, and, and not so because the Bible talks about, you know, um, men to men sharpening each other, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I can say this, um, we're gonna to touch on that too, as me being a church member, I came here needing some sharpening. Pastor, amongst other men that he sharpened, we've sharpened each other, right? So what, what you have is, it, it takes fortitude for a man to lead a woman. If you didn't get it growing up, you don't have it. I have it. Right? So if, if you need that fortitude, you have to get around other men to get it. This yep. is why we have the infidels, uh, or being worse than the infidel cycle going on. Mm -hmm. So if, if it takes a strong man to provide, to protect, and to be the priest of his home, uh, it, I mean, it does take a strong man to provide, to protect, and be the priest of his home, um, but many lack the proper example, which is the point that I'm making. So they desire to be led by the woman instead of leading the woman. I, I, I hear men in conversation even still to this day, popularized probably some years ago, but you always hear men say, I don't want no woman that can't bring something to the table. Or I don't want no woman who can't do what I can do or... I know that if I get down, I want the woman to be able to take care of the slack or hold the slack, right? I, I've, even though I was raised in a single parent home, I still had the foundation that the man was supposed to be in charge. So I had something to work with, thank God. So for the, for the young men who don't have that foundation, they're growing up. And, and unfortunately, this generation is full of them. Young men who want somebody that will meet them halfway instead of just allowing the woman to be the help meet to the 100% that I'm providing. So if I'm being the priest, if I'm being the pro provider, if I'm being a protector and you holding down the home for it, that, that's your portion of it. That's your help me side of it. So um, I already read the scripture, but so it's, it's in, in that mindset, it's easier to be taken care of than it is for uh, to take care of someone. And I, and I get that. I get mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Right. I, the men here talk about all the time and our heroes means we talk about all the time. It isn't it isn't that we don't have those moments where we need to be strengthened or we don't have those moments where we're like, whoa, it was a long day today. I had, a, I had a conversation with a brother today right before we started shooting. It's a long day, but that doesn't mean that I want to completely uh, negate my entire responsibility. I'm still refreshed and that I know that I'm in God's order and that tomorrow when I get up again, I'll be provided with the strength to continue on in that. Um, so I, I think that's what, what most churches um, are, are lacking these days. They're, they're not recognizing the power uh, in the order or in the creation role concept or or teaching or doctrine right and then then seeing it in their men or not seeing the lack of in their men and then having those type of conversations to say hey guys let's come together let's really let's really lay this out biblically and then let's lay out a map that's what we get in heroes we get a map to do this so we're not just being preached at we're also being taught it and given a way to do it so it's easy to apply every day
Um, and, I, and I think that's where, where the church is kind of. Well, know, and I did a sermon in, in Heroes, well, a series actually lasted a while called uh, uh, Did I Miss Something? Yep, sure did. I don't know if you remember that. Yep. And it was basically showing men what they missed just mm -hmm. because they didn't have the example present when they were growing up. Right. That's not an excuse. Right. The only way we're going to straighten this out is to get back in God's order. But going back to your original question, Carmina, as far as why isn't it taught in churches? Well, let's look at the let's, let's look at the makeup of churches. A lot of churches have nothing but women. Hmm. I mean, if a church is predominant, predominantly filled with women, you want those women to have good jobs to pay for that church. Right. <laughs> and then I heard a lot of pastors tell me when I was, you know, first getting the creation role message, I was, you know, when God was dealing with me about even calling it creation roles and different things. And I, they would pull me to the side and say, hey, brother, don't you preach this? And I'd be like, why not? It's like, dude, you need dual income. You know, you need you need wow. dual incomes in your church. You don't need to be trying to get the women to be at home with the kids. You need the dual incomes, doc, because right. that's what's going to sustain the church and keep the church. And I'm like, but what about the home? Like, don't these kids need somebody to watch them? Right. You know, and that's what I think. <laughs> I mean, why would people have kids and then put them on someone else? Mm -hmm. And then how do you even buy back the years you miss from not being there with your child? And why would you even want to? Like, why isn't your goal in life to be with your child and, and get those formative years right. uh, with your child so that you can make sure the right thing is instilled in them when they're a young age? The mm -hmm. Bible says train them up in the way they should go. So when they're old, they won't depart from it. It didn't say when they're old, you start training them. <laughs> right. So you want to train them when they're young. So how do you end up doing that if you're not spending any time with them? So I'm thinking that the focus ought to be if we're going to have a successful church, we need to start having a successful home right. and, and, and start dealing with things, you know, from the home first. And, and, and a lot of churches won't do that because they have a lot of women in high positions, a lot of women bringing in big cheese, you know, and yeah. they have a lot of women that are head of their homes. And then, you know, a lot of these churches got women pastors. Right. And they got women pastors and they got, you know, women in leadership, you know, disobeying the Bible, of mm -hmm. course. I mean, that, that's not even up for discussion. You have to discredit Paul. You got to discredit his writings. You got to discredit a part of the Bible to even have a woman pastor or right. a woman pastor in the church. Come on now. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to do that. But I'm saying that churches shy away from this type of message because society is saying one thing. And if I go against society, man, right. I might mess up and folks won't want to come. Right. But I'm the type of person. Why would I want people? First of all, why would I want the church to match society? Mm -hmm. The Bible calls society the world mm -hmm. and the world and the lust thereof is nothing but the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. So why would I even want the why would I even want that in the church or right. you know make the church carnal like the world? Our job is to call people out of the world and say, hey, we've got a better way here. We've got God's way here. Not only can God fix you, God can erase your past yep. and give your children a better start. And that's what's important to me. So if I, I believe that true churches you know, speak this way that I'm talking and this ought to be high priority uh, or everyone's priority. Right. So Pastor G, we hear that explanation and there's some families that are watching that they haven't had that information. They haven't been taught that. And so everybody's working, dropping the kids off and they say, well, you know, I desire that for my family. I want to bring it back and we be biblical for lack of a better term. So how can you encourage them? Because they're like, well, financially, I really, I really can't do it. You know, I really need her to go to work and I go to work. But how can you encourage them so they can line up like it needs to be? Uh, we, we got this thing we do here at, mm -hmm. uh, at ABC, right? Everything's a cinch. I said this before, you're gonna, they're going to hear it a million times. Everything's a cinch, inch by inch. Okay. You take it one day at a time. There's no way that you can reverse 25 years in one year. There's no way you can reverse 25 years in two years. Sometimes... You just take one thing at a time, you change that, be encouraged, build your faith, and you take the next step. Be encouraged and build your faith, and you take the next step. Everybody, just about everybody here at ABC tries to implement this same doctrine just because so many of us are doing it. Mm -hmm. So uh, quite naturally speaking from the brother's standpoint, uh, a lot of us talk, and, and men come here and they're mesmerized by guys who have been here for five, six, seven, eight years and they think it's going to happen in 90 days. It doesn't work like that. We all had to pray. We all had to have conversations with our wives. We all had to go to pastor and say, hey, man, I don't know if I can do this. And then he would encourage us and give us word. 
it, there's a process for everybody. So I think the idea for those particular homes, especially coming from the man, mm -hmm. is you, you implement one thing at a time. First thing before you even go to, don't go to the woman, right? <laughs> Do your job first and then it'll fall in line. That's what I did. It's the advice that I got. Hey, man. The Lord knows what you want to do. You want to be in his order. So do what you're supposed to do as the head and everything else will follow. And that's exactly what happened. There's nothing to add to that. From my, you know, um, example, mm -hmm. there's nothing to take away from that. So I, that would that would be my my humble advice to, to anybody. If, if you hear this word and you want to line up with God, then do speaking to the man. You do your part first and everything else is going to catch up to it. And before you know it, you'll be doing it. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, another thing we got to realize is what, what we're saying here, you know, we're, we're talking about God's original intent, okay? A lot of people aren't concerned with God's original intent. They just kind of like things to acquiesce to what they want, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just a certain group that we're talking about here that want to do it God's way based on his original intent because his way has proven to be beneficial, Right. Meaning, you know, if sound doctrine is preached and sound doctrine is followed in sound doctrine, it says that women should be keepers of their home. Uh, it says, you know, uh, because it says that we know that that is God's sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to be preventive for certain things. You cannot tell me that a person that spends, you know, 12 hours with their child a day, uh, a, a person who gets two hours or three hours a day is going to have his, have more success. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work that way. So the ultimate goal of anyone should be to, you know, conform to the sound doctrine. And that's what we're talking about here. Right. So I understand and people we're not talking about women not working either. Some women have to work. Right. Some women are, you know, in the workforce or they're single or whatever or some women are married and because of student loans or debt or whatever, they they choose to do that or whatever. So we're not saying women shouldn't work or whatever. We're just not taking a blanket and throwing it over everything. Right. Uh, this is going to be based on the individual. But I will say this, you know, it ought to be your top priority to spend as much time with your children as possible Amen. and be there for them in their formative years. That way you won't have surprises when they grow up. You know, I get parents tell me all the time, man, my kids, man, I did the best I could for them. Well, your best wasn't good enough because obviously they're starving for attention because they're robbing banks now, you know? <laughs> so what, what, what <laughs> and then they, you know, a lot of parents like to, act like we're rolling dice here right. and you know we're rolling children dice and whatever we throw oh i threw a six man i crapped out my kids crazy well i threw you know i threw a seven my kids are heaven you know i mean we, we ain't playing a game of craps with lives the bible tells us if you train them up in the way they should go mm -hmm. when they're old they won't depart from it well what is that should go well, that means that you got to instill certain a certain amount of time in them. Mm -hmm. You have to prioritize them and you have to denounce yourself. Yes, you do. For them. Mm -hmm. And that's what people don't want to do. People want they want more attention than their own children nowadays. Right. And so people don't want to take that back seat. So what are we saying here? And I know I said a lot. But what we're saying here is your, your advice was great as far as getting around people to help motivate you and keep you encouraged and that kind of thing. But we, we need to understand why we're talking about this. Right. We're not going to put the woman over the man. We're not going to mess up God's order because that messes stuff up. If we're looking for real solutions to our problem with our children and with our homes, then we got to get them in God's order in order to fix it. That's good. That's good. And see, I'm glad you were able to bring that balance to it because I didn't want us to be Rochelle from Everybody Hates Chris and just go home. I don't need this job. Talk to your husband. <laughs> we got to take a break. We've got more of the exposition coming up in just minutes. <laughs> shows on TV to teach you how to tell your business. They're teaching you the opposite of sound doctrine, how to put yourself out there. Men gravitate. They want the secrecy. So they'll gravitate to a dangerous situation just for privacy. If a man feels like you good without him, you just let the air out of him. He's useless.
I mean, what's the point? Why are you competing with your husband? Why are you trying to look like you got it like that? Our divorce rate is high in our country right now because men have no role in the home. They're not the provider anymore. They're not the uh, priest anymore. And then they don't need to protect anymore. So that's what I'm saying. If we have more of that, more of a standard, a moral standard, a moral code instilled in our children at young ages, and that starts with the mother. Yes, it does. It starts with the mother because you have the child before the man can even get it. A sound mother makes her family her top priority. And their success, not hers, their success speaks for her. So we welcome you back to the exposition. We're talking about the year of the woman. Mm -hmm. So I believe you got a question from me. I do have a question for you, okay. but not in celebration okay. of the year of the woman. Though. <laughs> but, but, but seriously, though, so if, if you had the opportunity to pastor a church, would you? Oh, no. Tell me, tell me why you wouldn't. You know, I, I was blessed. I grew up in a home where my father was the head of the household. He took great care of my, my mother and myself and my siblings, and, and we felt protected. We felt safe. We felt wonderful letting him lead it. So I'm good with letting the brothers have authority. I have no issue with my men. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, I, I, I love that answer, really. Um, and it fits into what I'm about to say, because I think that the desire to rule over men, for women, the, that desire or longing to rule over men comes from a traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. That means something happened in the life of a child, I mean, of a young girl that made her no longer trust the order of God, uh, where is the man taking care of the woman. Now, you know, if you just tuned in, we, I, I just believe that men ought to take care of their women. Right. I mean, I just, I don't, I've, I saw it growing up, but the word illustrates it for me. And mm -hmm. I want to do what God says and I want to please him. I don't want to be worse than an infidel, which right. is worse than an unbeliever. unbeliever. So I want to provide. He said, if anyone provides for his own, uh, those of his own home, that uses his for a reason because it's referring to the man. Because if, you know, especially these Hebrew Israelites and all that, if we're going to go back to the old covenant, right. that's the way it was, you know. Right. And that's the way God wanted it. That's the way he created us because he made us first. But bad fathers, promiscuity at a young age, Sexual violations, um, you know, these birth the desire to rule, dominate, or even compete with a man. It stems from these actions occurring in the life of a young lady where she can't trust a man with that responsibility. Right. And that's where, that's where we get the year of the woman. That's where we get feminists, bra burners, and all that kind of junk that they do. It's because they're angry because they didn't have the example. You don't ever hear that where there was a strong man in the home illustrating that and passing that on to his daughters. You right. know, I'll use my own daughter as an example. That's what she went looking for. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, let me change it. She didn't go looking for a dude, oh, true, yeah. but that's what she longed for. She longed for somebody that was going to do it the way her father did it mm -hmm. in the home so that she could relax and do her own thing and be a, you know, do whatever. And she didn't have that responsibility on her. Now I'm not dissing the responsibility uh, or making it look like being responsible for a home is easy. That's the hardest thing in the world. There's <laughs> like no other job harder than managing a home. Preach. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. other job. <laughs> managing kids, Man. managing my kids and me, which is the, I'm the fourth kid sometimes. Right. You, that, that's, that's very hard. So, mm -hmm. you know, for, for, for society to make it look like you're not doing nothing in the home when right. you actually have lives that look like you in the home that you're managing is ridiculous. This is God. This is a God given um, a thing. So we want to make sure that we illustrate this. This is why a strong father in the home is so important. Not only is he an example for the son, mm -hmm. but he teaches his daughters how to be taken care of and be provided for by man. A woman never desires to dominate a man when she has been properly shown God's or how God's order works. Titus 2 and 4 says that they may teach the young women. Now, here you go, women. Here's your teaching right here. It's telling you who to teach. Right. It's, you know, this is why Paul said, I suffer not a woman to teach men. But here's what you teach. You teach the women. It says teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, mm -hmm. and to love their children. children. 
That's sound doctrine to be obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemy. Okay, but see, I'm going to take that and go back to something that you said earlier. You were talking about how that is, it is difficult to take care of a home and take care of children. But looking at television, as you mentioned before, and looking at different things like that, it's like, oh, you're not fulfilled. You're not doing enough with your life. There's more to you than that. <laughs> Talk right. about that. Why does society and, and media and things like that make it like that's not good enough? You're not enough if that's all you're doing is taking care of your family. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it goes to, back to the Bible. The Bible teaches that, um, that, that the people of this world, that they're blinded by, by the God of this world, which is the devil, mm -hmm. right? So Pastor spoke on it earlier, um, the idea that God has a cap for us. So the devil wants to take that cap off and have it to overflow. Overflow creates chaos, chaos, anarchy, more and more. The absence of authority. We, talked, we covered all of that. That's mm -hmm. what it all leads back to. And, and Pastor just touched on it again. So it, when when he read that a woman a woman never desires to dominate a man when she has been properly shown how God orders work order orders work right. So even in my own home, like my my youngest child is um, seven years old. She'll be seven years old um, by the grace of God. I, I, she'll never see anything other than God's order as it relates to me taking care of the home, right? So when she grows older, she's going to want to see or want to replicate the same thing. She's She's not going to draw the guy that wants her to bring 50 percent to the table because she's never seen it in, that, in our home. It's the same concept. So and then vice versa for my sons. My, fun, my sons won't go out looking for a woman that they, they want to bring 50 percent. So it, it goes back to, again, that I, I've been saying this whole time. It's just the cycle. Do we want the, the cycle to be the one the, or the ways of the world? Or do we want the cycle to be God's order? So in and of and all, we can we can be blessed by, by God's order. And that's that's what happened in the Garden of Eden. You know, God gave them everything they needed. They were content. The devil came, tapped on the woman's shoulder mm -hmm. and made her discontent. That discontentment made her want more than what God gave her. In other words, what the role God has given Eve is not enough. The devil is sitting here saying we can be better or we can have more. That more ultimately led to the fall of mankind right. and led to death. And that's what it always leads to, the, the, you know, the desire for more instead of finding contentment. Paul was in jail writing the Bible and said, I've learned even in this situation to be content, meaning I'm just going to live out my process that God has for me. And TV and Internet and these kind of things are putting more on people than they can bear. People want to quote that all the time. The Lord won't put no more. You know, they. People just be quoting songs. They don't even know what the Bible says. They just quoting a song they heard. He right. won't put no more on me than I can bear. <laughs> so they, they're quoting a the song, but they don't realize God is not going to put more on you than you can but bear. You, but we you can, can put right. more on you. Mm -hmm. The internet, social media, Instagram, mm -hmm. all of this can put more on you than you can bear. Your desire grows and grows and grows. And when this desire grows, mm -hmm. it causes you to get out of your role, take people out of their roles in order to satisfy it mm -hmm. and just to satisfy public opinion or what people think of you. So that has a lot to do with why people cannot uh, adhere to God's plan here uh, when it comes to creation role. And if I may, Pastor, it, it also eliminates um, competition. Contentment eliminates competition. So whether you're taking care of your home with $20 or I'm taking care of my home with $5, both homes are taken care of. Mm -hmm. So I'm not looking at your $20. You're not looking at my $5, but we are looking at each other saying we're both doing what we're supposed to that's do. That's right. And it feels good. So I just want to throw that out there. No, that's great because that's that's the equalizer, mm -hmm. even here at, at our church. That's why money and what you're driving and where you're living don't mean much around these parts. Mm -hmm. What means, uh, oh, oh, dude, uh, are, are you taking care of your wife? Right. Are you taking care of your kids? Right. Then, dude, whether you're making 20 a year or mm -hmm. 200 a year, yeah. we know that we're all equalized by the fact that we're doing what God has called us to do. Amen. And so we don't have a competitive thing going on. That's right. true, man. That's right. real true. Now, one thing that we, we've stated over and over is that we have to take our guidelines from the word of God, from the Bible. There's no other way. So with that being the case, then, why is it that we're seeing so many bishops and pastors that are still putting women up and allowing them to lead the men, even though the Bible says don't do that? You know, when we take the freedom to change the Bible to what we want it to be <clears throat> for the sake of societal norms, we give everyone permission to do that. 
that's where we've messed up. You know, uh, people can believe the parts they want. They can throw away the parts <laughs> they don't want. Right. And that's why the church is in trouble. That's why the Hebrew Israelites can come into your church and jump up and yell while you're trying to preach because they're pointing out the inconsistencies in your doctrine. Mm -hmm. If you have a woman pastoring a church, the Bible says, do not do that. Paul said specifically uh, um, uh, in the Bible that a woman should not assert authority over a man. He suffered not a woman to even teach a man. Mm -hmm. For someone to explain that away by changing the Bible, then now you've given people uh, license to question, you know, Paul's humanness, Peter's <laughs> humanness, right. John's humanness. Well, this is his, this was his opinion. We have to know when it's the word of God and when it's his opinion. Well, who's saying that now? The black Hebrew Israelites, right. man, don't you quote Paul because those are his opinions. You better quote Moses because he's heard directly from God and it goes on and on. <laughs> That's why, you know, but, but, but aside from all of that, I mean, God tells you the head of, of every uh, woman, the head of the woman is the man and the head of the man is Christ. Right. Christ is the head of the church. So God has given you the order. So how do you change that? Right. Well, in Christ, there's no male or female. Well, right. it, <laughs> we're not discriminating against folk being saved. We're talking about who's leading the church. And the Bible is specific when it tells us who should lead the church. Absolutely. And, and you know, I'm not a pastor, but I am a church member, right? And, and in light of that, I'm, I'm not going to a church where a woman is leading. I'm just not because it's inconsistent with what I do in my house. So my mm. children, my children see dad leading. My, my children see dad providing, protecting, being a priest. My children see that. So if we go to a place, right, or fellowship where I'm saying I'm getting this information from and they see the opposite of that, it's inconsistency. So now I'm not training up my child in the way they should go. So when they grow older, I shouldn't expect them to follow God's law because I didn't follow it or I showed them an inconsistency that 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 caused them to question it. And, you know, and I talked about this, too, in another episode. I, I see it now with with uh, the generation under me and my family, some of my nephews and, and cousins and stuff, mm -hmm. because we had so so many things that we hadn't hashed out biblically and, and, and then applied it in the houses or in the homes consistently. Mm -hmm. Then we have I have a generation of, of young people under me that look at me like I'm something out of a, you know, I don't know, a horror film or something like, <laughs> like, dude, like, so your wife don't work. I'm like, dude, no, she don't <laughs> like she, she, it's a choice that I made. Right. But then in making that choice, I had to go and do the necessary things for it all to line up. So it still falls back to application and then the responsibility of the application as well. So you, we just got to be consistent. I don't want my children to, to question God, let alone, um, to question me, let alone God. Um, because I chose to to submit under the you know the wrong authority, which would be a woman pastor. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So in, in making the balance again, I got to ask this question because unfortunately we're in a society where there are a lo lot of women that have been forced to be the head of the household, mm -hmm. and so they have to do it. They have to raise the children alone. They have to be the breadwinner. What are they supposed to do when they're looking at this and we're talking about what the actual order should be? What are they supposed to do? Well, I mean. They're supposed to do what the Bible says. So <laughs> until you're found, you're supposed to be, if you have children, then mm -hmm. you obviously take care of your child or children, right? And then if you if you do not have a husband, then you're supposed to be busy in the church. That's what the Bible teaches. Okay. So where can you serve um, in, in, in your fellowship or your local um, church? If you are under sound teaching, if you're under good leadership, that won't be hard for you to 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 uh, acclimate to because those examples will be given mothers of the church, elders of the church, the pastor. There will be example. There will be examples in the place. We have it here at ABC mm -hmm. that we, we because pastor preaches creation role and because we're trying to live up to God's standard don't mean that we don't have different walks of life that are around us. Mm -hmm. and, and the same people sit on the same in the same chairs and under the same teaching don't feel judged by the people who do have a two parent home. Mm -hmm. that you don't feel judged because no, that's not the lens we're looking through. Mm -hmm. We're looking through the lens of standards. So you get in order with God if you're single and then you wait until you're found and or if you are a single guy, then you go and find one of these young ladies who are waiting to be found. Mm -hmm. And then boom, it, it happens just like that. It's real easy. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, in that waiting period, you got to make sure you're praying uh, to God for him to heal you of your issues. You know, make sure that your issues didn't get you out there. And that's that's the big thing now. Mm -hmm. Maybe your issues have gotten you to the place that you're in now. 
And so you want to make sure you don't have those. Cause I have a whole lot of, you know, not a whole lot, but we've had women before, you know, come here and, you know, they're like, man, I want to get this jazzy off of me, you know, de jazzify me, you know, and I always <laughs> tell them, hey, I have a PhD in jazzyology, so I can help you with that. So we're going to de jazzify you or whatever, and we're going to put the machine, put you in the machine and hit the button or whatever. Right. But then soon as the dude comes and we're going through premarital counseling, I'm starting, I'm like, okay, now. The, the jazz machine, we might need to run you through a couple right. of times, you know, <laughs> run you through because you're not going to be that willing to let go of your independence right. as willing as you think you are because it's been rooted in you. A lot of times it's all you've ever known right. or it was stamped in you. And a lot of times it's stamped in the folks by their fathers, you know, that don't want to provide. I know fathers that don't want to provide for their families or whatever. So the first thing they're teaching their daughter to do is to go out there and get her own so she won't ever have to, you know, take from a man mm, wow. because he don't want to do it. You know, wow, so, yeah. so a lot of them have been conditioned that way. And so they have to be unconditioned or they have to be changed. So make sure even in that interim period, whatever you got to do, whether you're working, whether you're on the grind, taking care of your child, whatever you're doing, if you are believing that God is going to come for you, rescue you out of that, you got to make sure you have the right a uh, spirit, like the Bible calls a quiet spirit, mm -hmm. where you ain't ready to take the dude down and take right. his and take his role, you know, <laughs> because a lot of times a lot of women are on their own just because of that, because they were on their own, even in the home mm -hmm. and men can't handle that a lot of times. And not not blaming women because I still hold the men responsible because a bad home is like a bad ship. The captain needs to run the ship. He needs to take responsibility for the ship that he's steering. So I'm not saying that, but I am saying a lot of times you are in these interim periods. You are in these these, these times so that you can improve on yourself and do better so that when God does bring the dude, right. he ain't running from you. Right. You know what I'm saying? He, he ain't trying to get away from you. And uh, that I think that's important as well. Amen. So for Amen. ladies that are in that situation, what you're saying is even though the man didn't step up, he may have stepped out, we still got to line up with the Bible regardless. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, because order is order. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, it's, it's no different than, uh, you know, we'll use something typical, right? You got the, the, the typical drug dealer guy lives a life of sin, does something really extreme, dies, then the preacher preaches, puts him in heaven, even though he lived a life of sin, right? So this is practice, or what we say is rehearsal for heaven. So it's the same concept. You, you're saying that you want a husband or you want a godly man who's going to come and lead you, then you need to live the life that is attractive to that type of a man. Uh -oh. A praying man is going, that's going to, he'll repel it. That he'll 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 talk to you, he'll speak to you, whatever the case may be. Nope, that's not the one. Because something's going to happen in that conversation or in that interaction that that shows that 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 godly man that you you say you won't come mm -hmm. find you. Mm -hmm. He's going to see or or sense or something. There's no way that he's going to. God is not going to waste what he's built in that man or what that man has gone after God for on a young lady that's not prepared for it. Just wait your turn. So now you right number two in the line. Now you go back to ten. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then we pass go one more time and then you come right back around <laughs> one time. But, but you know, in, in seriousness, you, you got to, and it's not just, it's the men too, yeah, right? Yeah. You got to be prepared. There's a young lady that's, that's just ready, but you just, the whack juice is like, as you, <laughs> as you, as you walk in, it's just trailing and we can just, we see it and we smell it. Um, and then it just takes, that's why you got to get around strong brothers. That's why you got to get around strong. strong brother come to you and say, hey man, the reason why you're still alone is because the whack juice is dripping off yeah. of you, man. Yeah. So, you know, you just got to be in a position to take the correction, that advisement, and then, you know, make the necessary adjustments. Yeah, and this this a strong man church, you know, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. you see it every week, Carmine. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many men here. Mm -hmm. We have more men than women. Dudes gather around in the hall and stuff. Women can barely get through because the yeah. dudes just, you know, we we have a strong male presence we here. Do. And so the dudes with the whack juice can't stay. Right. You know, we they just they just they just <laughs> melt out of here. They you know, do. we just mop them up and put them in a bucket and throw mm -hmm. them outside because mm -hmm. they can't stay around this because we're talking about really being strong mm -hmm. and really being strong in the home according to what the Bible says mm -hmm. here. And so Women, you have to be prepared for that as well. So a single woman can't be trying to take the reins from a man who's been trained up to be the leader of the home. Right. And so it all has to work like you're saying. So I would take that time like a, a stress. Well, well, let me just read this because I've got the end here. Okay. And we're going to wrap this up. But this is this is going to be a good little summary here 
um, and it's going to cover this. The year of the woman seems to be the chance for women to be equal to men in our society. This is the push from feminists to finally have equal rights for men and women and change our societal norm from a, patriar a patriarchal society to a matriarchal one. That's what the whole year of the woman is all about, changing that moniker. This is one <clears throat> where the women provide and leads the home and the man leads, the man follows her lead, the matriarchal one. That's right. the one where the man is actually following her. Mm -hmm. Women already have outnumbered men in the workplace, unfortunately, here in our society, and now they desire to lead the man in every facet of our society. Today, most girls view marriage and children as haphazard events right. that may happen on the road to being successful and self-reliant. Mm. Isn't that a shame? Yes, they is. seek independence from their parents and desire self-sufficiency to protect them from being hurt, disappointed, and let down by men. Many of their fathers push their daughters' self-reliance because they themselves never truly provided for them financially or emotionally. And many women end up settling with men that pressure them to provide and carry the responsibility of their home. This is so far from God's plan for mankind. God desired for the man to provide, protect, and be priest of the home so that the woman can be full-time caregivers and protectors of the children. This raises the esteem of the children and protects them from being idle, loners, or, or protects them from bad influences many times. This helps keep the home in order, keep the family strong, and keeps dysfunction from opening the door to issues that fight against God's creation roles. Most divorces, unwed children, and identity issues are linked to the order of the home being circumvented. This is the breeding ground for what is wrong with our society. When the home is finally addressed, all of our issues are addressed. Amen. God's way is the only way. 1 Timothy 2 and 9 says it plainly, in like manner also, the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh, I mean, which becometh professing godliness with good works. So he's saying, don't, don't have the good works just on your body with your yeah. beautiful hair, your gold, your pearls and all that. Don't let that speak for you. He's saying uh, with becoming women professing godliness, let it be your good works right. that show for you. Let the woman learn silence with all subjection, meaning understand when to be quiet and let your work speak for you. Then he says, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence, basically when it comes to teaching men. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. So he's telling you why the woman should not usurp authority over man, because in the garden, it didn't work very well. He says, for Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, mm -hmm. meaning if she sticks with her role, mm -hmm. she's going to be saved in the end. Right. Uh, she'll be saved from the societal influence, is what it's saying. If they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. 